In this video, three top indicators to use when day trading cryptocurrency. We're gonna go over what these are and how to implement them when trading crypto. Timestamps for the indicators down below. The first indicator that we're gonna look at, or more accurately, a data point, is something called M2. Now, if you go to Trading View, you can get M2 very easily. Just search for this ticker right here, WM2NS. You should be able to see it and it should come up right here. Trading View is completely free. I'll leave a link to them down below. There is a pro version where you get a lot more indicators, but I don't think you need it. But anyway, if you wanna tr use Trading View, it is free and you can use this exact chart right here. So we've got the money supply M2. This is the blue color right here. I'll just uh, toggle off the NASDAQ. So we have the blue money supply. Now toggle on right here in teal. This is the NASDAQ, your know, QQQs in the States. So you can trade this very easily. And as you can see, it has a pretty decent correlation to the money supply. When money supply contracts, you seem to get these sell-offs, and when money supply expands, you seem to get these bull markets. This is not just a spurious correlation here. This, uh, this has, over decades, had a very strong correlation. So at a base layer, base level, we can use the growth and contraction in money supply to give us our bull and bear markets. Do we wanna lean bullish or bearish? That is really what a professional is gonna be looking at uh, to give them an indicator of where we are in the market cycle and should I be getting very bullish right now or very bearish. So as we can see these three lines right here, we have Bitcoin down at the bottom. During the pandemic, money supply was expanded, a huge government intervention with expansive money supply. And as you can see, that correlation right here with this blue line, money supply up, NASDAQ absolutely took off. Now the stock market did as well and other risk assets. So you can look at all different types of risk assets and markets, this will be the correlation. Right here, this is when the NASDAQ actually topped. Now this was November 21. That was when the Federal Reserve came out and said, we are going to start uh, contracting this money supply expansion that we went through. We are going to plan to raise interest rates and reduce money supply through quantitative tightening. That is actually reducing liquidity within the system. Now, because markets look forward and look ahead, as soon as the announcement of that comes out, they start to price that in. And as you can see, when money supply actually started contracting right here and actually going down, this is that bear market that you get in the NASDAQ. Now I'm looking at NASDAQ here, but you can see the exact same thing for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin down here. When the money supply started expanding, this time right here, we started getting the price rises of BTC. And of course, it's not exactly the same as the NASDAQ because you have specific um, things that affect Bitcoin that don't affect the NASDAQ. But again, when the Fed said, hey, we're going to start quantitative tightening and reducing money supply, Bitcoin, it literally called the absolute peak Pico top for BTC right there. And then we have this bull market. Now, what we have is actually, right now, as of making this video, an expansion of the money supply again, uh, just starting to, we don't know if this is going to continue, but as you can see, as the money supply has actually expanded a little bit right now, you can see the NASDAQ has taken off and Bitcoin has taken off. So we can actually look, and I'll leave a link to this site in the description as well, money supply M2. You can see it has a very tight correlation to the price of BTC. When money supply expands, the price of Bitcoin comes up, and when the market knows that money supply is going to contract, it starts to price it in before that happens, bear market, and then when the money supply starts to expand again, you get the bull market for BTC and down and up and down. So hopefully you can see that correlation there. So as I said, on trading view, I'll leave links to it all below, but that is the first correlation. And that tells me as an investor or a trader, where do we wanna be? Are we looking for prices to rise in a bull market or are we uh, expecting to go defensive and actually see a bear market? If you wanna know how to actually take advantage of these cycles in liquidity and the market cycles, I actually made an update in the crypto course recently going through this specific thing. You can see all of these videos essentially were going through that. Uh, in terms of timing the cycles, uh, the liquidity cycles and the market cycles better. It makes it a lot easier to actually invest through bear markets when you know these cycles have ups and downs rather than just looking at prices falling. You know that that's actually something to take advantage of when you understand the cycles. I'll leave a link in the description. The crypto course has 300 videos now. It's updated for free um, for existing users as well. And you have a lot of other trading videos right here uh, specific to crypto and other day trading strategies. So I'll leave it in the description if you're interested. Uh, the next 
um, indicator though, or two indicators that I'm gonna use here are really trying to tell us where buyers and sellers are in terms of you know who, who's winning in the market. Where are the order flows coming in? Are buyers winning? Are there more buyers than sellers? Where is the flow from those orders going? over time. So we can look at the price of Bitcoin up at the top, but what's more important to understand is traders and flow. So we have two indicators that I think you can just use together here. So one is called OBV. So again, on TradingView, you can go to indicators up here and just type in o, uh, o, OBV. You should be able to see it. it's on balance volume. Uh, so it should be their indicator OBV. Uh, you can see a few different ones, but just simple OBV is something I like to use. And then down here we have accumulation and distribution lines. So again, if you just go to accumulation, you should be able to see it uh, right there. So you can click it on the chart. So what this is showing us is, um, you know, are people or are traders uh, distributing or accumulating? So that's the bottom one. If you see this accumulation from buyers, that's telling us that so obviously more buyers are coming into the market. If there's a distribution, then obviously there are more sellers in the market. And if there's a distribution of stock, whatever it is, if it's Bitcoin or whatever else, then if there's a distribution happening, then prices don't usually rise in that respect. And so what you're seeing is just the flow of trade from buyers and sellers over time. And if you can see that, it makes it a lot easier to try and determine you know, what's gonna be happening in this environment for the price. Now, OBV, on balance volume, is, is essentially the same sort of thing where you're looking at the um, the battle between buyers and sellers. So at any given price, is the order flow um, more towards the buy side? So more buyers are coming in and trying to you know, force the price up, or are there just more sellers coming in and the on balance volume is towards the sellers instead of the buyers? Now that's one way of looking at it. The other way is to look at it, look at it in a relative way just like you would with chart and uh, with a chart and so with a chart you're looking for any sort of trend so not just the amount but the trend as well and so with any chart you're looking for higher highs to be in an uptrend you can see this is uh, higher highs higher lows that would indicate an uptrend well these two indicators you can see that as well are the seller are the buyers coming in and making higher lows over time and so they're actually more and more buyers or are they not doing that so what we can see firstly here, um, we can see the divergence between the price and the OBV. So what we can see is that uh, Bitcoin made essentially an all-time high right here, and then we had the sell-off. Now, what you wanna be looking for when the price recovers is, was that just, uh, was this sell-off, which was very harsh, was this just uh, a blip and we're actually having uh, new highs that we're gonna go into? Uh, well, we can look not just at the price, but the on-balance volume. So what we got here was, you know, a, a dump from the all-time high, but then we climbed up to essentially an all-time high again. And you're thinking, well, that's, uh, if just looking at the chart, you're seeing it's a really bullish chart and we're gonna take out the high and people are buying at this stage, right? Because they're thinking it's a very bullish chart. However, if you look at on-balance volume, and this is actually in many different indicators as well. This is, um, had, uh, exactly the same thing through the RSI, the relative strength index and some other indicators. What you can see is buyers were coming in here, but they were kind of flattening out. And if we look through to this time here, you can see that buyers did not force this indicator to a new all time high, but the price was doing it. This is known as a divergence. And so when you're looking at this, you're saying, well, the price is going to basically an all time high, but there are more sellers in the market now and this is not bullish, okay? So you're actually making um, a lower high here and it's kind of in a, in a downtrend. That's a divergence between what the price action is doing and what on balance volume is doing. So at that point, this is where you start to question, is this price action essentially the kind of end of the cycle, right? The end of this huge bull cycle that we saw, or does it have more legs? If this on balance volume was making new highs and there were tons of new buyers pushing up the volume, I would be much more confident to say this rally has some legs and there's, you know, there's a lot of volume coming in from buyers, but there just wasn't. And so that's a, a potential where you say this price action may be something that I actually fade and not buy uh, just from this on balance volume. So that's how you would use it there. Now, if we look uh, further down into the future, which is kind of uh, what recently happened, a potential bear market low for this cycle. Now, what you can see is the price action is very, very weak. 
you're getting these sell-offs, no real rallies here, very weak price action, the depth of a bear market and everyone's bearish. And then we get this here as well. Um, what we can see is the on-balance volume, you're actually seeing buyers coming in massively into this price action. This is again a divergence, but now to the bullish side, whereas the previous one was fairly bearish. You're getting this weak price action during a bear market where everyone's um, going crazy. But if you look at the order flow, which is the real signal, you're seeing people accumulating and buyers coming in. Now we can look at the accumulation distribution lines and you're seeing a massive divergence here. Huge bullish accumulation from buyers on these two metrics with this weak price action. And that's great for a potential reversal. Now, this isn't going to happen overnight. This is actually a fairly long period of time here if you have the patience to trade this. But what this potentially is, is a massive opportunity. Now, this right here was FTX, the FTX debacle and the big fraud there, which pushed us down lower. You can see that buyers were coming in here and trying actually to have this as the bear market low, but FTX was an outlier. You can't really predict those sorts of things, um, but that forced us to a new low down here, but we can see accumulation once more. Not too, bear, uh, not too bullish on this indicator, but accumulation distribution definitely showing us that buyers are coming in and accumulating here again. So without FTX, you may have actually seen that as the low and a bull rally. FTX happened, we got a new low, but you can see accumulation happening here massively. And that obviously leads to this eventual uh, breakout from this zone. And this has been about an 80% move here from those lows, which is a fantastic trade, which is within about you know three, four months time uh, if you are accumulating at these levels. So hopefully that gives you an idea of not just looking at prices, but looking at order flows and the strength of order flows of buyers and sellers that can give you much more info into how to trade. The next indicator is VPVR, volume profile visible range. Again, all this does is just show us where trade volume has occurred. And so we're looking at buyers versus sellers and at which price are they having a battle and who is winning. So we can actually get this indi indicator for free on Coinglass. They do give this indicator on TradingView as well. It's part of the pro version. I have a discount for the pro version down in the description, but again, you can just get this for free on Coinglass. Um, so what we can see here on the right hand side, we can go to indicators and then VPVR. Now, this is going to tell us at which price did buyers and sellers uh, trade the most volume at? Those prices usually give you a very good indicator about uh, during uh, price movements where the price is actually gonna get to. You can then use that to actually go ahead and trade. So what I usually do is uh, look for VPVR and these other indicators. And then when I'm trading either on Bybit or you know other, other exchanges, uh, you can use that as price levels to actually um, enter into trades app. So I'll show you how to do this. Coin glass here. I'm on the week chart, so a very long-term chart. Now, first thing I know is that this price level is the key price level here because it's traded the most volume. Now, if we go to indicators, you should be able to see this, the value area up, blue, and value area down, yellow. You can change the colors here if you want, but the up area is essentially where buy volume has stepped in and yellow is where sell volume has stepped in. Now, when there's more buy volume, that obviously potentially indicates a very strong support to the downside. Uh, and if there's a lot of sell volume, that might be resistance to the upside as well. So you can see where people have traded here. Traders have put uh, their trades in. This is a key level. This is 21,000, around 21,000. You can see it acted as support here. So this is uh, a key level that I'd go and put on my chart right here. 21,000, you can see it around this level. I'm on the day chart. So you can use different time frames, week chart to see where the volume is, go down to the day chart when you're day trading. So we can go back, that is a key level. Now we've had a huge uh, bullish move up here, a massive candle. So what we're gonna look for now is, where do, where's the price going to go, right? That's what you want to know. So we can look through and we can see that volume here is actually very, very low. And what we wanna see is volume is starting to increase around this price level right here. This price level, as we're coming up into it, is going to act as resistance. So if we look across around this price level, look to the left-hand side, we can obviously see that this is a very clear area that the price trades around a lot. So we can see that here once, twice, three times. 
Now, it acted as support twice, it acted as support here, but broke through it eventually. So that's a key level. And if you look to the price level, it's 30,000, which is obviously a key level, 30, 31,000. For this bullish move, I would suspect that this is a midterm price target for this uptrend if it continues. And so we can use that when we are trading. Now, when you have a big move like this, yes, you may get a pullback. Where's that gonna pull back to? Again, this is the price level where the volume has traded. This is around 25, 26,000. So again, you can see that price level here is a definite support and resistance level. So I would actually see that as a support level, hopefully during an uptrend, to then go and make new highs. So that's how I would trade. Now, that's on a week chart. You can actually move this down to the day chart as well if you want, and then you get some more specific price levels, um, which also show you. But you can see again, from the week chart, that is where I said that that might meet some support, and you're starting to see volume come in at that uh, level as well. If that doesn't hold, then you're looking down at this price level again, because that's where the most volume has traded. And as you can see, uh, that would be a decent uh, price support around 23,000. So you're getting levels now. Now what you can do is go over to your trading software and actually try and figure out well, what, do you, what do you want to trade? Are you in for a day trade, a scalp, uh, a week or a swing trade? What is it and what are your key price levels? So I would look here um, on the volume profile. That was a key price level for me, but we're way above it now. So I would actually take this price level looking around 24,400. Uh, around this price level. So yes, that, that does have confluence because we are here and as I saw on the week chart, we are coming into a range, if we do come down here, that we would be meeting support. So that, that VPBR is telling me, yes, when the price, if the price does come down here, it's gonna start to meet some trade levels and some support. So I can come back and say, on the uh, Bybit trading system, this is where I would want to enter some trades because M2 is expanding, so I'm leaning towards being bullish. We've had a massive run up, but what I wanna look for is buying dips during bullish times. So hopefully you would actually get a little retrace back to this price level that we've seen on the VPVR is, is you know uh, quite supported with volume and actually get into a trade at this level. Now, I won't go through uh, actually entering trades and looking at uh, support and resistance levels and you know putting in um, you know, different long positions and where you put your stop losses. I go through that in the crypto course. So, you know, you can find out more. I'll leave some free videos in the description that go through this as well. If you do want to trade on Bybit, if you're a trader, get a deposit bonus up to $4,000 on there as well um, via the link in the description. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.